Hi guys, um, it's Michelle and I want to um, talk to you about a meditation that I did tonight at the studio Just Meditate since I'm now launching meditation classes there and Monday night at 7 is when you can actually come and, and do some meditation with me. Um, meditation is a very powerful tool. It teaches you that your um, mind is not controlling you, that you control your mind. So one of the topics that we talked about, or I talked about today to the students, is about change and how to change a habit or a pattern and really um, stop the clinging, the obsessing, the uh, need for it, and really to watch how this pattern affects your life and underlying most of these patterns that we have if you hear that clickety click that's my dog Lily <laughs> she's always sneaking around trying to see what I'm up to <laughs> um, but really if we have a pattern or a problem something that is causing us suffering we'll just pick something like that the way to really change it is to change your perspective of it so the first thing that you have to do is get still and quiet and allow yourself to visualize this attachment or problem that you have and see the problem. It's in your mind, right? Or your subconscious, it'll come up and notice the feelings that it gives you. So automatically, if I think of a problem I have, maybe I get anxiety. So the anxiety gets triggered. And usually these feelings and these attachments to something that we have this strong clinging need for has to do more with the past. So something in the past uh, didn't go well and so now we're role playing these things in our everyday life and situations and the things that we're attracted and the things that we really get hung up on and attached to are the very things that cause us the most suffering and exactly why this is a great place to go in order to create some transformation and shifts in your life. And it's amazing what will happen once you dissolve this particular thing, how other opportunities and things come in and you find that you can be more peaceful. And isn't that the point? We're all just trying to be more peaceful and get clarity with this chaos. And the chaos is there just to point out something isn't resolved. So that mind of yours goes into this chaotic attachment and the more that you try to will it away the worse it gets the bigger it gets it gets like 3d um, and it becomes really big to you and exaggerated and so these things play out in our lives in various ways with these habits and patterns and addictions and attachments that we get ourselves stuck and in, in into but again if you know that your mind is not something controlling you and you don't see yourself separated from that mind and people that get really obsessed like let's say in a relationship um, they think that I can't stop thinking of that person I can't you know I, I, they're in my thoughts you know and then it becomes this sort of clairvoyant telepathic thing that they're feeling and and there might be some truth to that I'm not saying I don't believe in that because I do but it's also the mind exaggerating the situation and blowing it up and rearing its head at you um, and it's because you're resisting the feelings so when you go into these situations and you start trying to resist the feelings that's where the problem comes in so the easiest way to change is to go into non-resistance non-reactivity non-clinging non-attachment and just breathe notice your breath take some deep breaths see the situation in reality so it's not so big in front of you and recognize what part of your past where does this come from allow it to tell you the story of you know this problem arose because of something and usually underlying that something is a deeper need to forgive someone a situation or something and forgiveness is really the path to peace so I know that sounds weird um, but in some ways, um, for me, it made a lot of sense when I read about this and, and learned about it, how forgiveness of self, um, just because we do create a lot of our own suffering, and it's ignorance that does that. We blame other people. We don't take responsibility. Um, we see everything outside of ourselves when really we're even creating 
the world around us just with our thoughts. So thoughts are very powerful and your words, your choice of words, the way you affirm things. It's really important that you're careful how you say things, especially to yourself, because you're creating your reality with your choice of words. So just like you can choose your words wisely, you can choose your thoughts wisely, and you can choose to create your life. And that's this whole artistry thing about um, create the life you want and that you're the artist and you have the way um, from these inner tools, this inner intelligence inside of you that really has all it needs um, to resolve any situation. And so that's the great benefit of meditation is that you can actually close your eyes and allow yourself to experience all the anxiety, the worries, the fears, and just feel them in your body. Notice where they are in your body and how that impacts your body. Those emotions affect your body and that's why this is so important that you understand that your body parts are telling a story about what's going on with you emotionally on many levels. And over time, um, it will weather or you know ruin, degenerate, um, your body parts and make you sick. So it's important that you pay attention to the storage in your body. Where do I store this feeling? What's the feeling? Name it anxiety. Let it manifest. Let it get big and just sit in the feelings. What we try to do in life is disassociate and we numb. We go into our aholic syndromes, you know, with our drugs or alcohol or shopping or sex or addictions on the Facebook, Instagram, all that stuff, whatever it is, those aholics flare up because they're trying to numb out this intense feeling that's going on. And rather than dive right into all our vices and pay all those consequences, it's important that we don't do that, that we actually stop. We can use a magic word like just stop it, <laughs> you know? Um, sit in the feelings, take some deep breaths and allow yourself um, to feel and stop trying to disassociate from your body because you can't. You can't really do it for very long effectively and eventually it's going to rear its ugly head and you're going to pay a price. So you're better off acknowledging this is what I'm feeling and in the privacy of your own mind in your home or wherever you do this and this can be done anywhere, anytime, any place, you sit and you address those feelings and let them grow and then dissipate and find out what the feeling is underneath it. So underneath the anxiety, maybe there's some sadness. Um, until you get to a place of calm and peace and, and even feeling love and just relaxed. Um, and so you allow that to, to process so that you realize it's really not that threatening after all. We're like terrified to feel something that we think we shouldn't be feeling. But all our feelings are relevant and we have to be honest about what we're feeling because you can't just hide them in a closet. Those skeletons will come out. <laughs> oh boy, will they ever and you're gonna have a lot of upset people around you. So these are the tools that you can use aside from just sitting. And meditation is easy, guys. You can sit for five minutes, two minutes. I think people think that they have to be really good at this or master their mind in an instant it's no instant gratification here so get over that just allow yourself to breathe I am breathing in I am breathing out and see if for just a few minutes a day you can quiet your mind the reason it works is once you empty and dump your mind you can just see things and feel things in a way that you have more clarity better perspective and in turn you can strategize and decide what you want to do next you know what's my next step in life where do I want to go with this um, but if you lie to yourself you're not being authentic about what you're feeling and you know you're just going to keep repeating these cycles over and over it's like bad relationships you just keep inviting them in different person same situation again and again um, and there's no coincidence with that because this is unresolved stuck stuff that needs to be cleared and through um, tapping into your subconscious and calming yourself down in a place where you can actually view this from an outsider looking in perspective, you can get clarity and it can help you with that chaotic mind that we call in yoga the monkey mind that likes to dance around and create all kinds of shit and havoc. <laughs> likes to tear a few things up <laughs> so if you can learn how to relax you will learn how to control your thoughts
and understand that your mind does not control you. You control your mind. So that's all I wanted to share tonight is how powerful that really is. And the more you practice, the better you get at this, at replacing negative thoughts with positive ones until you're in better situations and those bad habits don't have as much power and influence over you anymore. So if anyone has any questions, let me know. I see, oh, hold on, let me check this out. I'm getting some people here. So acceptance is key. The future of spirituality is no longer just all inside of us in the era of soul and return of balance in the divine feminine. Oh, yes, I love the divine feminine. That's a good one. That's a whole other topic I will get into. But thanks for sharing that, Robert. And also, um, I see other people are here. So welcome. Hi, Kenny. And Jennifer, I see James. So guys, I am just here to tell you, you know, I'm not a master by any means at meditation. I happen to be sharing some things that I've learned um, and how to actually better my own um, life and feelings. And I can only tell you that a lot of amazing things have manifested for me. I shouldn't be where I am today. You know, I didn't grow up in an easy situation. Um, I had major panic attacks, anxiety, been through a lot. I have PTSD. Um, I just every day try to keep it together and do my best. But I have to say I've been able to do what I do and I've accomplished quite a bit when odds were against me, um, including tons and tons of certification classes and um, to be able to concentrate that way through a lot of stress. Um, you know, to me is miraculous. It's no short of a miracle. If it's really um, because of this mind body connection I have um, to yoga, to meditation, to breath work, it's all been the stuff that's helped me and why I've been so inspired to share it and teach it. And I'm just getting more and more opportunities to do it. And it's opened up a whole world. So, you know, for a long time, I didn't do this stuff. And I have to say, I got right into bodybuilding and I was ignoring my body. I uh, wasn't really listening to my mind. I needed the strength that bodybuilding offered. But when you're over trying, overdoing, and again, that's an aholic. I'm a workaholic. And so everything I get into, I get really into. <laughs> and I overdo, overachieve. And so this is my struggle. And these are the kinds of tools that have taught me how to manage myself better without killing myself. Now, I have to be honest, I've had a lot of issues with my body because I don't know when to slow down and I'm working on that. So we all have things to work on and I want you guys to know you can change short term, but these things don't go away. You have to remember they don't magically disappear like we think we want them to or that we can just cast things out of our life and oh, it's over. It doesn't work like that. These things just keep reappearing, reoccurring in our life. It's how we deal with them. And so what this teaches you is, oh, aha, there it is again. Okay, what do I want to do with it? Do I want to kick, scream, make drama? Or do I want to calm the F down and really take a look at it and think about how I want to handle this and make a smarter, intelligent decision from my inner intelligence um, rather than my lower intelligence, which tells me to do a lot of messed up stuff like, um, you know, go drink some more, <laughs> go numb, numb, you know, go sleep with a few more girls, you know, it, it might tell you to do a lot of bad things. And so you never want to listen to your lower self because your lower self will lie to you and say, you're getting away with it. You're getting away with it. It's all good. It's all good, buddy. And then one day kapow is not good anymore. And you're wishing you had read the writing on the wall a long time ago and what your mind was telling you and your body. So with that said, I'm going to wrap it up. I'm trying to see if I can see any questions here. Um, let's see. Questions, questions. Anybody have questions? Um, oh, it's Robert again. Robert, you must be some sort of an expert. I don't know who you are personally, but you obviously have a lot to say about this. So I'm going to go back and read these notes. And I want to say hi to Michelle. So if anyone has questions before I sign out, which I'm about to, please ask me anything you want to know about what I'm talking about, about changing a habit, a pattern, and understand that it begins here in the mind, um, that no one's to blame for this suffering that you're creating each and every day. Um, we have to take accountability, especially after the age of 18, to frame our lives and our mindset 
in a way that creates as minimal suffering. Um, and we might think we're into some of the things we're into, but really that's a symptom. So a lot of these bad habits and patterns are symptoms of something deeper going on inside, something unresolved from the past, and also a part of us um, that is unhealed and really needs to be looked at. So get your flashlights out and get in there, drop in, take a look at what's going on inside yourself. Just silence your mind enough to take a little peek at what the hell you're doing with your life and think very seriously if you are struggling with some big things if this is really how you want to create things is this really the direction that is best for you to head or if you need to knock it out you know knock it out now knock it out of your life and um, start again by dropping in using your breath paying attention to where you're feeling things in your body and just start to pay attention to the connections it'll happen quick It can be a spontaneous healing if you do this. However, remember our Achilles heels, all these things, they stay within us. Um, They are in there and they will haunt us. So we have to pay attention when they flare up and just remember that aha, there you are again, to pause, take a breath, get still and quiet and decide how you're gonna deal with that. And you can make wiser choices and more productive ones that I help enhance the quality of your life. And that's it for tonight. Have a good night, everybody. Thanks for watching.